Hey. Our friends, Hola. our family. Hola, buenos tardes. Bienvenido. Bienvenido. Somos tu familia. We're your family. Oh, say that again. Somos tu familia. Somos tu familia. We are family. I got all my sisters. Can you me. sing that? I was going <laughs> to say. Somos tu you familia. Call me a sister. Mi hermanas Bro. y mi. <laughs> That's I'm the just beard here. I'm wearing today. <laughs> beard. You're the bearded lady in the circus. I am too. <laughs> That's how the song goes. We got all our happen. sisters. You guys aren't my sisters. Just you're the, my misters. Well, that doesn't That's even right. sound good either. You're my bros. That's right. You're my bros. The bros. Welcome to the normal world around here. This is what we do hey. all day. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. We do that. Plus, these guys rescue me when I get in trouble. I went on a walk today <laughs> and got lost and found myself across the street from the church, not being able to cross 26th. Saying, Chris, yell at me when I can cross the road. <laughs> Why did the pastor cross the road? <laughs> to get to the other side. Other side exactly. <laughs> he got me safe. I'm like safe right here because he loves me. Yeah. This I, would have been his opportunity right here. I could have. Oh, it's so sad. Go We're ahead and come out now. Crossing yeah. the road. Hey, come on. <laughs> I was looking for a pay raise and a t- title raise. Yeah, now so. I know how I can be senior pastor of this oh, church. Oh, Here's shoot. my moment right now. <laughs> yeah, he it was so me. sad that Brent crossed the road. He didn't cross the road. What are we even doing? Okay, we're, <laughs> I just told these guys, i got to be done by 1.45 today, and then here I am going, being crazy. But this is actually uh, us. So someone asked me Friday night, I was, I was running uh, uh, sound, and Jeff, Jeff Agater was running a, a video, and he's like, for this event we were doing, he's like, we watch you guys on Wednesdays. He's like, you guys look like you really enjoy each other. Is that what it's like? It yeah, is. that is, it is. This is like real. I mean, yep. what you see here is us being absolutely real. This which, is what we're like. Which you would think, like, yeah, of course they get along, but yeah. that is not always the norm. Nope. I mean, nope. Nope. even though we're pastors and work for a church, doesn't mean like we're going to be besties right away. No, nope. true but, story. But we get along. Yeah. We get Thank along Jesus. and we actually like each other and we enjoy each other. Yeah. These are two, and, and I hate that Jamie, and I would love it if Tracy could, I mean, I hate that Jamie can't be here. I hate that Tracy can't be here. I hate that Tana can't be sitting here. I mean, it could be, you know, I could, I could keep going. But, but these two are here. So I just say I absolutely love these guys. I love them, just so everybody knows. I love working with them. I like them, as, not just love them, I like them. So. And I love what they get in the Word. So speaking of that, we should get into the Word. John chapter 7 is where we're at. We are going through the book of John, and we're taking our time. However, we're going through it uh, more rapidly than we went through Song of Solomon. Yes. Which was like two verses at a time over the course of two years. But um, this is so good. I'm, I'm, I love doing this. I, I love expository. I don't preach expository on Sundays. Uh, but I like that it's a part of our rhythm as a church because we, when you do expository, you can't just skip over things. You go through and you yep. have to wrestle with and um, to really uh, come under the text rather than impose your thoughts on the text. The idea is to come underneath and submit your life to what Jesus reveals to us through Scripture. And so I love doing that with these guys and with yeah. you. And we need your comments. So yeah. John chapter 7, and we're going verse 25 through, is it 39? I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, 25 through 39. So Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to yeah. us. Yes. Oh, we just want to see Jesus because there's freedom and liberty and joy and mm-hmm. knowing Come Jesus. Yes. All right. So we're, uh, well, I'm not even going to give context. We'll just jump right into it because we're in the middle of conversation with Jesus that has a lot of backstory. But if you've been with us, you know it. So. Some of the people of Jerusalem therefore said, Is not this the man whom they seek to kill? And here he is, speaking openly. And they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Christ? But we know where this man comes from. And when the Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So Jesus proclaimed as he taught in the temple, You know me and you know where I come from, but I have not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I come from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. 
Yet many of the people believed in him. They said, when the Christ appears, will he do more signs than this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him, and the chief priests and Pharisees sent officers to arrest him. And Jesus said, I will be with you a little longer, and then I'm going to him who sent me. You will seek me, and you will not find me where I am. You cannot come. The Jews said to one another, where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, you will seek me and you will not find me where I am, you cannot come? On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And now this he said about the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Mm. Ooh. That was a lot. You like this one, don't you, Brent? Oh, I do. Uh, <laughs> you knew that. I'm going to start right from 38. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm going to let you go. No, I, you guys pick all the meat off, man. I'm just, I'm just going to hit on it just a little bit, but not right away. Um, so I was reading, and as I read 729, I just felt like things were just popping off the page. And it says, and I'm reading from the Amplified so that I can kind of understand a little more of what's going on. And there's just some more description there. So it says, I know him myself because I came, because I come from his very presence. Mm -hmm. And it was he who personally sent me. Come on. So Jesus is saying, I know the father. I came from his presence and he sent me. Yeah. And as I was reading that, I just felt like the Lord was just saying, this is like a key to life for the believer. Come on. To know, know him. Like, we know him. We yeah. get to know God. But Jesus is talking about, like, know, experientially knowing him, like, the, taking time with him. Yeah. Like, understanding God. And so, like, this experiencing God, taking time with him, just setting our gaze upon the Lord is so good. And then Jesus said, I came from his presence. And so, you know, we're charismatic church, Pentecostal church. We love the presence of God. And we know the presence of God is with us all the time. But there's those times where it's just like, it's tangible. And as I was reading this, I was just like, man, when Jesus was in heaven, it was, it was God's tangible presence. He was with him. He saw him. He could feel him. He yes. knew the Father, like, intimately. And like that's a that's a calling that we we get to have we get to experience, and then it said and then he sent he sent me, so it's like you get to know God you get to know His presence, and you get to be sent. Yeah. Of course, the evangelist in me, you know, yes, was like, oh, oh, send, hey, send. send, you know, because come on, dude. Because how many times have we gone reading the word just like this, or been in a worship mm -hmm. setting, or just praying and. You're just like, man, God is so good. You sense his presence. You sense his nearness. And you're just like, oh. And sometimes it's easy just to hoard that for ourselves and just go, oh, this is so good for me. And it is good for us. Like, it's so good yeah. for us. Like, it, like, I bet if we went to, like, a science lab after, like, just, like, <laughs> Hanging yeah. out with Jesus and experiencing his presence. I bet you could see all of these great things that happen to our body uh, mm -hmm. in the presence of God. But it, it's not just for us. Mm -hmm. It's, it's for, those, for those in our neighborhood. It's for our family. It's for yes. us to just be, you know, the, be Jesus to the people around us and love the people around us. And so his presence is a motivator yeah. to love the people. It's not just to, like, cling to it's, it's a motivator it's a to one. touch the world around us. Um, and it doesn't just have to be his tangible presence. His presence is with you at all times. But it is really nice when you're like, whoa, I just like sense God right now. I, yes. I like feel him. I love that. We've been talking about fascination. Brent's been really hitting that. Like, mm. does Jesus fascinate you? Mm -hmm. And I want him to fascinate me. And he has fascinated. Yeah, you know, we're just talking, we're like throwing every angle at this word. And there's something about being fascinated by him, like his presence, knowing yes. him. Like, I'm sure, you know, Jesus was in awe of the Father. Like, it, look, he comes to earth, he does everything the Father tells him to do. And I don't think that was out of, like, duty or obligation. Right. He just loved his Father. He just loved God. Yes. He was fascinated yeah. by yes. love. This is God, and he's so real. 
And I, I think that helps us to turn, turn our eyes on ourselves and, and turn our eyes to the people around us, just to be an open vessel to them. And that's good. And that's Jesus. You know, yeah, Jesus, Jesus could have just kept it all for himself and just hung out as he was yeah. here on the earth, but he came to pour his life out. Mm-hmm. And I really, like, personally, I think that's an amazing honor that we get as well to just go, you know what? This life is brief. We're only here for a little bit. Mm-hmm. We might as well tap into the source, know him, yes. get to know his yeah. presence. And then everyone around yeah. us, let's just, let's just love. Let's be a blessing to, let's pour out to yeah. and uh, watch the world around us get to choose. Maybe they'll change, but yeah. at least we're giving them the opportunity to go, huh. Yeah. You yeah. know, kind of yeah. like these guys were as Jesus was talking. Like, mm. Nobody's talked with this kind of authority before. Wait, everybody's saying that this guy's a loser and he's not, he's not the one we're looking for. But as I listen to him, yeah. something's coming alive in me. <laughs> yeah, and could on. this be the one, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And so even though we're not Jesus, mm. we get to know the father, we get to know his presence and we get to talk about eternal things. And there's eternity written on every person's heart out there. <laughs> and when we start to talk about that and we hit on that, they get to make the choice and go, yeah. oh, wait, wait, wait. God is, he's real. Or wait, I want to hear what you have to say because mm-hmm. we'll get mockers like that. But I just thought that was cool. Um, yeah. I also Ooh, thought. That's good. Yeah. We, we, I was, you guys you, getting fire on that? You said fascination. The, yeah. the quote was Damon Thompson's. Fascination will take us where determination won't. Yes. Uh, yes. Like f- fascination fuels us. Yes. And we, we can we can run on the fuel of the presence of God yeah. rather than the fuel of our determination. Yes. And we're gonna grit yeah. our teeth and yes. so yeah, I'm I'm with you hundred percent, bro. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah, that's, that determination is more of a survival mechanism. And I mean of course you can you can and God uses all those mechanisms, but yeah, the yeah. fascination is of wonder. Mm-hmm. And the brain can only get to a certain point. Like, okay, it's fascinating for this what this reason. Yeah. It's like, no, actually, brain, there's way more to it. Good mm-hmm. job. Yeah. <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah. there's more to it. Yeah. yeah. And the body That's can cool. only do so much, too. Only so much. Be so determined as you want. There's going to come yeah. a point. Right? Oh, yeah. You made me think, too, of uh, John 17. This is eternal yeah. life. Is yeah. that what you were thinking Ooh, of, too? No, I was This is that. eternal life, that they may That's know true. you. Yeah. Like that, where you're talking about that flowing, that sending flowing from the knowing mm-hmm. like the, and from the fascination. Like the eternal life is not just going to heaven. Who am I in heaven but you, David said. Oh. So that, that, that eternal life is knowing the Father and knowing the Son in the fellowship of the Spirit. Like mm-hmm. that is life. Hmm. Oh man! Like you got me fired, bro. Yeah, fired verse twenty nine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Also, so I'll hit on. I'm gonna Keep hit going, on thirty eight and thirty nine just a little bit. Yeah. Because as you're talking about like um, determination, can only mm-hmm. take you so far. Like it kind of hit me when I was reading this. It says that in the Amplified, it says springs and rivers of living water will mm-hmm. gush out of your inmost being, and I just thought like. What's determination got on that? Like, mm-hmm. I believe, <laughs> I true. receive, and from my inmost being, rivers, like unending, sure. unending rivers and springs yeah. are going to come out of me. You yes. know, I think for some, I, I think the brain can only, it can, like you were saying, can only, it can only go so far, it can only um, understand mm-hmm. so much and mm-hmm. believe so, so like thoroughly yeah. that yes. like, we, I think sometimes it's easy for us to go, ah, like maybe, maybe if I say something, it's, it's gonna, it'll only go so far, you yeah. know, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna like try and reveal the father to them, but I don't know if people are going to believe like, whoa, like when we open up our, not even when we open our mouths, but I'm gonna, I'll go that way. Yeah. If we open up our mouths, like rivers are coming out, streams yeah. are coming out, regardless of how we feel. Regardless of what's going on all around us, mm-hmm. there could be like seven different tornadoes, like trying to like take us off yeah. course in our life. But we've got rivers of living water just flowing out of us. So Amen. that that should be encouraging to you to go. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, God will take my words and He'll just He'll just flow through me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, 
So man, that's good, Ryan. Yeah, he will. Yes, yes, he will. Go ahead. The knowing, the knowing is what popped out to oh, me. Oh yeah. Um, and you were saying that, and that's he tells that to them. Like you don't know him. Yeah. Like you know about him. Mm. Uh, and that's that. That's that determination versus wonder, the intimacy mm -hmm. versus complexity. It's the yes. same themes that I hope we just keep carrying through all this. And more than just our study of John, but since we're here, I hope we keep carrying that because it's the picture and type. Uh, it helps us see the picture and types that God used for us and making yes. us and for his, his principles of his heart, not just um, laws that were, have been fulfilled. Um, I love that they're walking in temple courts and they're like, wait, is this guy supposed to be dead, dog? Isn't he supposed to be dead? Yeah. Like, <laughs> wait, they want to kill him, though, but they're just letting him go? Hmm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, let's check it out. Uh -huh. You know, it's just one of those things yeah, I like that. where it's like yeah. uh, the people that don't even know kind of know, right? Yeah, uh -huh. they don't even, yes. they don't even know they're being the used. Do know? Yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. they they see it. They yes, get it. like ah, uh, okay, there's something here. We know yeah, this, yeah. Uh, and they can feel it. You can always feel home, no matter what. Mm -hmm. That's why that old tired atheist argument. Well, then why can I be good if I don't know God? Well, you're made in His image, right? It's like yeah. you're doing it no matter what. There you um, go, dude. Uh, and they're like, uh, but we know where he comes from. Like, oh, we know him. This is Ryan. Mm -hmm. this, we we know him physically, but he's he's like Jesus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. funny because I, I love how it says. Then Jesus, still teaching in the temple courts, cries out. It means there's a distance. Like you can hear the reverb on my voice now. It's like, murmur, murmur, murmur. Hey, yeah, you know me. You know, it's just uh -huh. like what he just heard them in the spirit. He could hear this, and I don't know if it was in the spirit, but could have been. Yeah. But how else do you hear over all the commotion of the temple courts? You, mm -hmm. you know, there's people in the back. And you're like, nah, yeah, you do know me, but actually you don't because you don't know my father. Yeah, like that's where, it. Come where I come from, he says, I'm not here on my own. Yeah, that is the picture of the human. I believe now he's showing us. Uh, obviously, they had still had the law then, and they weren't. Sh they, it wasn't fulfilled fully, and Christ hadn't done the finished work yet. But He was the finished work Himself. So He's showing Ooh. that we're not here on our own. Mm -hmm. like, it's not yes. just us. If it was, it would be the machine in our brain and our heart, and that'd be it. Yes. So they don't organs. That song's not true. Here I come again. Yeah. Oh, we can't do it. I'm gonna get blocked off. <laughs> <Yes>. Facebook will block us. <laughs> it's not true at all. No, which, it's not true. which speaks of the communion that is eternal, like you were talking about. Yeah. It never ends. The knowing, the knowing that you're not here on your own, that you don't breathe on your own, that you don't speak on your own, you don't think on your own. I know oh, some people have problems with that, but I say God's bigger than all of us, so why not just err on that side instead of the side of us? I'll just err on that side, and God yeah. will correct me and give me more of myself as needed, but I'm just going to err on the fact that God's doing all of this and we're just partnering with it, on, with yeah. him uh, in it. And, yes. uh, uh, it, there, uh, I am, I am not here on my own, but he who sent me is true. So Meaning I'm only half, you're only seeing half the picture and the truth is actually who sent me. I'm from the truth. Yeah. I'm a reflection yes. of sovereign. And it actually reminds me of this, of this verse. I was writing a little rap yesterday or the day before, but yeah. trying to finish it yesterday. But it was a reflection of sovereign, uh, part of sovereign himself, uh, royal face of the king. Yes, the cards have been dealt. Uh, so you are a piece of the greatest story ever to tell. DNA dances with God, love's inscribed on your cells. Because Whoa. God is love and in relationship love dwells. Uh, and then I just forgot the rest of it. But, <laughs> but saying it uh, so is good. that there's not just a singular. There's never just a singular. And the moment yeah. we do, pride it becomes our, our motivation and we become our God. Mm. Oh, man. I am not here on my own. Yeah. I'm not here on my own either. No. I am no not here on my own. Check this out. I am, comma, not here on my own. Oh, Saying God yeah. and not on my own. Yeah. It's always relationship. That, and God seeks to dwell with us constantly. Yeah. I mean, yes, we exalt him and, and bless his name above all names, but he wants to just do the same and like bring us to us, not exalt us above his name, but give us the same kind of relational yeah. adoration, yeah. the yeah. same kind of like, no, come so, up here with me, yeah. right hand. Yeah. And that's where he's saying like, Ooh. you can't go there. You're not allowed. Right. But it's because they're not in grace. They don't, they're, you're not allowed in the law. That's not a knowing. That's just a doing. Yeah. That's just a striving. That's a trying. Yeah. Right. And. Yeah. And the, the, the religious leaders were trying to, you know, do what they always do. And like, ah, but the narrative, <clears throat> let's craft this narrative over here. Pull these strings, wrangle these people. Make sure that the, the thing is, the narrative is solid and we can't have any. Like, and they're worried about this. He's like, no, I'm just here for a second. 
Like, yeah. and then, but watch out because when I leave, you'll want to go with me, but yeah. you won't be able to. Yeah. And I, 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 I heard a teaching earlier from somebody. I don't need to say his name, but a little more, uh, a little more harsh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and he was, he was just like, you're not allowed. Not everybody's gonna get in, and you, you're just not allowed. And he's, he's gonna be here for a time, but then he's gonna shut the door on you. Mm-hmm. And there might be truth to that, uh, and eventualities to that, but. Why are we airing on that right now? Let's air on 33. Uh, or let's, uh, let's air on, where was it at? Um, uh, on 37. On uh, the last and the greatest day of the feast. Saying the greatest day and the last. His message was, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Yeah. And he'd shut the door forever. I mean, obviously that would be an eventuality if you shut him out. You have to partner. He made right. you authoritative to partner. Yeah. But I, this, this teaching that I was listening to was only, was, was really heavy on the, um, you will look for me, but you will not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. And it was just like shutting the door on, oh, you sinners, the door is shut. The door is shut. Uh-huh. And that's not even what Jesus was saying. I, I believe he was saying, uh, you can't come to me the way you are. You can't come to me in this yeah. and what you what you think you know in, yeah. in your system. Yeah. You you can't reach that area. You can't come there with it. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. impossible. But on the last and greatest, hey, yeah. come to me. Follow me. If you're actually thirsty, if you're actually hungry, follow me. Yeah. The gate's still yeah. wide open. Yeah. Um, so if if you are reading this and someone sticks on that part, go to the next verse for them and yeah. and read them the invitation because the invitation is what Jesus is always leaning towards because that's relational. It's not just the oh you can't come here and you don't know him and because a lot of a lot of religious leaders like the Pharisees in here they focus on those things that you yeah, can't and what you're not able to do and what the rules allow and don't allow. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, "Well, he said you're not allowed." Well, what he's saying is without me. If yeah. you think you are on your own, like over in, in 28, if you think you're on your own, you can't come here. It's not possible. Yeah. But if you understand that, that you are not on your own and you are with the one, the true one who sent yeah. you, then your access is full. So if you're hungry and thirsty, come here and I'll give you that access. Yeah. Um, let's see. Spirit uh, and the bride say. Come. Um, yes. Yeah. Streams of living water will flow from within them. I mean, he, he doesn't even say, he doesn't even stop it like you're in. You know, like humans do. Did I get in? Did I not? Did I, you know, my part of it's like, no. He's not even, he's not even focused on this. He's saying, yeah. you're thirsty? Well, guess what? Not only will you not be thirsty, that actual water will just come streaming out of you. Oh, that's good. Like, you won't just be a drinker of, yeah. the, of the water. You'll be a tap. You'll be the drink. You'll be the drink. Exactly. The drink. You're the drink. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I love that because he's always doing that to us. Yeah. He answers the question with the deeper, yeah. with the deeper. That's like, good. Like, oh, you think you know me? Well, you know, part of me, but I'm not a here on my own. You know the half of me. Yeah. You do know that half of me, but you don't know the other half. I'm not here on my own. None of us are here on our own. It doesn't yeah. matter. None yeah. of us are here on our own. And he's doing all that. So and if you know nice. that, the water's coming out of you. You don't yeah. have to drink you don't have to be thirsty. Uh-huh. You're drinking constantly. I didn't want yeah. to stop on that misspeak, yeah. but you're you're drinking constantly. You're like it's like breathing. It's just a it's it's like a internal uh-huh. pump system. Yes. It's just watering and draining and watering and draining and watering and draining. Mm-hmm. And the soil just stays perfectly. Um, ass, I don't even know what you call that. Rich and healthy, healthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know we're short on time. We just keep talking, but oh goodness, um, so but I I love that that main part just stuck out to me so hard about about not being on your own yeah like it's impossible it's not and he said it so that's what i got for today good night any of you guys want to pop anything in the comments please do i see tana on here i see diane um heinen is on here as well so uh you please drop your comments in and anybody else who jumps in with us um man so what what are we at okay we're good um, gosh, there's so much here in this big chunk of a <laughs> scripture, go, but bro? yeah, Where are you gonna <laughs> exactly. Go? <laughs> but you guys got me like listening to you. Like I was thinking about, um, the, the, uh, I come from him who is true. I think that's really good because earlier in John, uh, the yeah. law came through Moses. We studied this, right? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, grace and truth that. came through Jesus Christ. And so, yeah. Uh, truth is on the side of grace, not the side of law. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're, they're actually presented as, as different ideas. Not that the law wasn't given by God. It was. But the purpose wasn't that the law would set us free. The yeah. law could never do that. The yeah. law points us to us. 
and shows us our desperate need for, mm -hmm. for God. And, uh, but truth is ultimate reality. And so when Jesus says, I come from ultimate reality, like yeah. he revealed truth. What's That's good. the primary truth that he revealed is this is who my father is. I mean, he came to reveal the father to us. And so that's what I was thinking, even as you were sharing. I'm like, yes, he came from truth and we could not see it. Like, mm. as I was saying, you don't know where I come from because you don't know my father. Yeah. And that was hard for them to hear that because they've got a rich history of, of a nation in covenant with God. Cool. And they've got all these religious leaders who've spent their entire lives memorizing the entire Old Testament. Yeah. I mean, and they didn't even call it the Old Testament. I mean, it wasn't the Old Testament. It was the Bible. <laughs> it was it. It yeah. was it. And, and it Torah. was the thing. <laughs> yeah. And so they're, they're like, yeah, the, the Torah, the law, the prophets, uh, you know, all of it. They, they the, the, the poetic books, they knew them all. And they still didn't see Jesus uh, because Ooh. they didn't know who the father was. And, and he, he looked different than what they expected him to look like. So. Here he is revealing truth. And, I, and that stood out to me. It's Jesus reveals to us the Father. And again, back yeah. to John 17, uh, I think it's verse 3. This is eternal life. That they may know you, Father. That, yeah. That's real life is knowing the Father and knowing yeah. who the Father is. Um, Jesus is the perfect representation of the Father. Mm -hmm. I love that revelation. Yes. Yes. The book of Hebrews says that in 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 former times that he revealed himself. I mean, he spoke to us through prophets and and but in these last days, he's spoken to us through a son, yeah. and he is the exact representation of the Father, the outraying of his glory. I mean, he is exactly God looks like Jesus. Yeah. I don't know whoever first made this statement, but I've heard it a bunch of times, and I use it too. God looks like Jesus, God has always looked like Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's never been a time when God didn't look like Jesus. We haven't always known that, yeah. but now we do. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And so when we didn't know that, we saw him even more so through a glass darkly than we do now. And even yeah. now we see through a glass darkly. But even more so before the revelation of the, the cross, which is the highest revelation of our understanding of the core nature of God, is the cross. A God, who is this God? No. who is other-centered, self-sacrificing, lay down his life mm. for the ones he created in order to have them by his right hand. Mm. So when he says, because this is the next part, I'm going where you can't go. <clears throat> this to me also today, as I was meditating on this, it's like that's, the, that's speaking of the finished work of Jesus yeah. that, mm. that did not include, we could not participate in. No. We couldn't have a hand in the finished work of Jesus. Mm. Uh, it, it's, it was foreshadowed in Abraham when God put him to sleep and walked through the blood of the covenant and cut covenant on Abraham's behalf while Abraham slept. Mm. <laughs> That's the foreshadowing of what happened in the new covenant where, where Jesus says, I'm going to go as mankind mm. and I am going to cut covenant with the father as the son representing mankind. God cuts covenant with God. Because if we get in there with our law-based, performance-based thinking, we are going to mess it up. Yeah. We, we aren't capable of it. And yeah. that was already proven over thousands of years. Like, it had already been proven. And so Jesus says, I am going to, to somewhere that you cannot mm. go. But he is going there so that we can. <laughs> that's, so the, can. that's the whole point. Is he's going somewhere we can't do this. You can't. We can't. And the sooner we ever come to the... The sooner I come to the place of saying, I can't, that's when I experience the I can of yeah. God. Yeah. Mm. Whenever I finally say, I can't anymore. And, and God's like, well, you, you actually never could, but I'm glad that you <laughs> are finally Brent saying, I can't. Yeah. I can't climb up into this. I can't make this happen. I can't work hard enough. I can't be good enough. Yeah. I can't pray long enough. I can't fast long enough. I can't uh, yes. live right enough. I can't, I can't, I can't. Uh, who shall deliver me? What a, what a wretched man I am. Yeah. Romans 7. Who will deliver me from this? Thanks be to God Thanks through God. Jesus Christ our Lord. Last verse, well, second to last verse of Romans 7, which takes us right into Romans 8. Yeah. Now there's therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. He went in to bring us in. We That's couldn't right. go in until he went in to bring us in Come on. and, and mm -hmm. brought us into this, this incredible, not just 
not just um, us trying to have a relationship with uh, this father who's another dimension. Like even though we're made in his image, there's this whole other, I mean, he's omnipresent, omniscient, he's all this. And how do I relate to, to that? <laughs> and, and so Jesus says, no, you're not just going to relate like the first Adam did, walking in the cool of the day. Yeah. I'm actually bringing you inside the circle of this thing. Mm. You're coming on the inside and mm. you're coming into knowing the Father as I know him. Yeah. Like I'm bringing you into my knowing of the Father. It takes God to know God. Yeah. And so that just spoke a lot to me today as I was meditating on it. And then, of course, like you said, the whole end of it. Uh, it's interesting. I, I was reminded of this when I was um, studying the IVP Bible background commentary today. That So the seven days of the, the Feast of Tabernacles, which that's what feast this is. So the first seven days of that feast, the priests would actually draw water from the pool of Siloam and they would walk all the way to the temple and they would pour that water out at the base of the, the altar. Hmm. And it, was, it, it happened every day and they, were, they would sing songs as they went. And one of the scriptures that they would go over every day, uh, I think it's in Zechariah, where it talks about how the water from the temple would flow out. Oh, yeah. hmm. And that water from the temple would really ultimately bless the nations of the earth. And so they bring this water twofold, he said, Part of it, the, the writer said part of it was they were asking God for rain. And so this was one way that they symbolized that. But the bigger picture that was always present in what they were doing was there's coming a day when living water. And that's that what it even so says in Zechariah. Will flow out of this temple from the cornerstone yeah. of yeah. this temple. Wow. That living water will flow out of this temple into the nations of the earth. That's good. And so for seven days, Jesus like holds his sermon till the eighth day, the eighth day, the last day oh, of the feast, come on. the eighth day, eight is new beginnings in scripture. Yeah. And he stands up with a loud voice yeah. and he says what you said, is so anybody easy. thirsty? After seven days of watching this yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. ceremony, they, oh, they even, they even the said, um, uh, Dr. Keener <laughs> said that they were able to take home a commemorable cup. Oh, yeah. from that week <laughs> that was reminding them of that water mm. that wow. that it, it would be like if we went to a conference and we went yeah. to the bookstore in the back <laughs> we have a bookstore and they sold living water cups you know from yeah. the week of the living water conference yeah. so all week long living water living water living mm. water and then they could even take a cup home and think about living water jesus capitalizes on that because he knows all of it speaking of this day of the holy spirit and tells them if anyone's thirsty and it's so good what you pointed out, Chris. Anyone. I mean, I, I just, just point out that it, when you come to the end of the book of Revelation, and it, it's similar language. Anyone yeah. who's thirsty. Ho, it, and it re, it's, it's reminiscent of Isaiah, which the book of Revelation quotes Old Testament all over the place. But it's reminiscent of the same thing that Jesus says. Like, if you're thirsty, if anyone is thirsty, yeah. come drink of the waters. Mm. Come drink. Those who have no money, Isaiah says, yeah. come and buy. Yeah. Like Jesus has given that invitation and he's saying, come to drink of him. Like, yeah. come to me. If you're thirsty, come to me. Mm. Like, I just love that. Yeah. And, and he says it to us today, too. Like, if you're thirsty, come to me. Yeah. Come to me. I'm right here. I'm never, I'm not a million miles away. Yeah. Mm. I'm in you. You're in me. Mm. Come to me now. Just you can drink right now, and then you become a drink, which is what yeah. you pointed out, which is so yeah. good. Because out of your innermost <clears throat> being will flow rivers of Dang. living water. Yeah. And I love that because John four he talks about a well, and in, in John four uh, you know you, you can yeah. reach down in that well and you can draw up water and drink. But when he gets to John seven now. He says, that well in you is going to become rivers. Yeah. Man. Like the well is there for me personally, but rivers, plural, that to me, John 8, uh, John uh, 7 is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. for sure. John 4 rivers. speaks of our salvation experience and our, our, you know, that we can always draw from the in, inner work of Holy Spirit That's and cool. always drink. But God's intention was that the, the, the water in me not just be a drink for me, but the water in me get on me. And the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me and anoints yeah. me and preach the good yeah. news. And so I, I always present baptism of the Holy Spirit as 
not the Holy Spirit dropping down from the sky, but Holy Spirit in you comes out of you as rivers and gets on you and anoints you mm. with power anointing uh, for to be a witness, mm. but to be a witness through the supernatural power it's constant of immersion. Holy Spirit. It's constant, constant immersion. immersion. Yeah. Very yeah. good. That's your intent. Yes. It's constant, constant immersion. immersion. Yeah. I love Just by that. your yes and your amen. Yes. It's a yes constant stuff. immersion. Yeah. So, so if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, come on, like you today, like you say you're a believer in Jesus. If you're not, surrender your life to Jesus now. It's that that's all. It's just saying He's yes. Burden, light yoke. Oh wow, yes, Jesus. Okay, I come to you, mm. and um, I surrender to you. And you can do mm. that today. But also, there's another uh, experience that you can live in, not just have a one time, but be baptized. Let the rivers of God that are in you begin to come up out of you. And that can manifest through all kinds of supernatural expressions. Many times in the book of Acts, like three out of five initial outpourings of Holy Spirit were uh, included tongues, a new language that you couldn't speak in before. Yeah. That is, I believe, and I don't have time to teach it today, but I believe it's borne out even, I'll just use this one. Paul, 1 Corinthians 14. I would that you all prayed in tongues. Mm -hmm. I would even rather that you prophesy. So both and. Yeah. It's not, I would that you pray in tongues, but I really don't want that. I want you to prophesy. No, it's I want you to speak in tongues, and even more I want you to prophesy so that the world can hear the message that's on the inside of you. There are loads of benefits to, to um, spiritual language, and it's not an evidence of being baptized in the Spirit. It's a benefit Come on. of being mm. baptized in the Come Spirit. Come on. So that's good. if you want that today... You can just say, I just receive. I thank you for saving me. Thank yes. you that you you brought me into the inside of this circle. Now, thank you for rivers of living water bubbling up yeah. out of me. I step in right now by faith to this brand new encounter being baptized in the Spirit. You say, do I have to pray in tongues? No, you get to. <laughs> yeah, come on. You don't have to. But if you want to today, and that's been something you've been longing for in your life, or, or you didn't know you wanted it till now. This can be the moment that you encounter praying in the spirit. Right now, I would never go to a shoe store and say, I love those hokas, but keep the tongues. I love those Nikes, but keep the tongues. No, I want the whole shoe. If it's available and there are loads of benefits, it builds up your most holy faith. Says Jude, you pray mysteries. Uh, you don't know how to pray, Paul says, but you can pray in the spirit. Yeah. Uh, you can pray in the spirit and with the understanding. You will pray things in tongues you would never have the guts to pray in your Come native on. language. Come on. You will pray the perfect will of God. You'll never miss it. So right now, I just declare over you in the name yes. of Jesus, be baptized yes. in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Whenever you're watching this, whether it's today or another day in the future, today is your day yes. to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to count to three, and when I hit three, I want you to breathe in. We're going to pray in tongues and ask you to just join in with us and receive yeah. new spirit. And if you have already before, why not today be a new day of... Yeah. Paul says, be being filled with the yeah. Spirit in Ephesians. Be being filled, he says. Mm. So it's not just a one-time experience like you said. Come on, it is a continual... That's right. Uh, immersion mm. in the spirit. So Lord, I thank you for baptizing uh, all of us afresh yes. Yes. with your Holy Spirit. This is reality. This is a reality for us today. So we receive it in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Come on, you can do it. Step out. That's right. That's right. See, it doesn't sound like you guys. That's okay. Come on. See, all I got is one <laughs> syllable. Do, do, yeah. do, da, yeah, da, yeah. da, da, da. That's all I have to say to you. <laughs> You've That's only right. got one little syllable. That's all right. The baby didn't pop out of the mother's womb going, wow, mom, that was rough. Let's don't do that again. <laughs> it doesn't have a full language when it's born, right? It's okay if it's just a little syllable. Come just on. step out and let God fill your uh, mouth today with a new language. Yeah. Mm. Be filled, be filled, yes. be filled, be filled in oh, Jesus' name. Geez. I just declare it over you. I yeah. promise. Prophesy, it's a new day. You're not just going to pray in tongues. You're going to prophesy, prophesy, right. prophesy. You're going to lay hands on the sick, yeah. and sick people yeah. are going to get well. You're going to pray for people, and you're going to see miracles manifest in their life. You're going to go out and be sent, like Ryan said, because you're so fascinated with Jesus that everywhere you go, people are going to want what you have because you are carrying the almighty yes. power of God in your life mm. because the rivers of living water are flowing out of you. And we declare mm. it over you today in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Woo! They're going to get well because they get the well. <laughs> Ooh. Come right. Ooh, I they like get that. The well. You get the well. Get well. So here's what Jesus says. Get the well out of here. <laughs> get, the, <laughs> get the well in here. Get the well out of here and all, over there. That's right. <laughs> My brother's on. Awesome. Hey, Peyton man. Dupert. What's yeah. up, Pete? Darren oh, Maynard. Yeah. I was thinking about you earlier. Mm-hmm. Hope you're great, Peyton. It's proud yeah. of you. Yeah, no That's kidding. Right. She's I awesome. Agree. I agree. Well, so I, awesome. I have to go. Just usually we take our time a little more than today. But yeah. um, shoot, I don't know. 43 minutes is pretty good on <laughs> yeah, John, John chapter 7. Yeah. So we hope that you're blessed today. We invite <laughs> you to come back tonight at uh, 5.15. We're going to be eating scalloped potatoes and ham, I hear. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hot and dogs pasta. for the kiddos. Yeah, come on. And then and we have life pumpkin groups. Bread. Pumpkin Ooh. cake. Pumpkin bars. Right? Pumpkin bars. Pumpkin, pumpkin bars. bars. Bar bread cake. We're going to hit the bars tonight. Pumpkin bars. Yeah. So we invite you to come out and be a part of it. It's going to be an awesome night. Six o'clock life groups and uh, youth, children, nurse, all of it. We'll all be here. It's family night. So come and join us. And we just pray you have the best day. And you just, I'm serious, man. You are filled with the Spirit. That's right. Yes. You're fascinated with Jesus. You're going to yes. change the world today. So That's right. have an amazing week. And what are we going to do? Keep, Keep giving, giving them heaven. heaven.